Hey everyone, thanks again for checking out my channel and my site and my work and all that. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to start planning your elopement. Let's dive in. So <laughs> this is a tough topic. I understand it. Like you're probably, you know, just decided, hey, we're not going to go the traditional wedding route. We're going to go the elopement small wedding route but we have absolutely no idea where to start with this. We have absolutely nowhere I, any idea where to really dive into this. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna to give you a few things that you can do just to get started. And just also to what to expect through this process and then why a lot of photographers and videographers are going to ask you to do some of the things that we're going to ask you to do and just how that actually benefits you in the long run. Um, so first, uh, you know, why you're going to do this, the like connection matters. Um, I think that's one of the number one things that when you're considering an elopement that you need to kind of figure out is the connection that you're going to have with your vendors, whether that's your photographer, videographer, um, if you're going to hire a planner, if you're a little, going to still go a little bit more high end. Um, but your connection with these vendors definitely matters because you're going to be working with them a lot more closely than you are just you know anybody that you do in a wedding. Because um, for instance, if you're gonna go the traditional wedding route, um, the odds are most people are going to hire a planner of some kind. And while you might get to make decisions on certain items here and there, you're not necessarily the person that has to communicate with them all the time. Like you're probably not gonna communicate with the florist as much as the planner does or vice, you know, understand like that. Um, so that's just something to kind of consider too. So that's why the first step that I have for you is going to be finding your photographer or videographer. Um, and the reason why is because a lot of us act as planners as well. Um, if you specialize in elopements, that is something that you're going to consider with the cost of everything too. Um, you're probably noticing too, that you're looking at numbers and like, Hey, you know, we did this because it's cheaper. Um, you know, there's some cases that eloping might be cheaper, um, but if you really want a high level experience, you really want an incredible experience, it's going to cost a little bit more. And some of that number isn't just going to be because, oh, you know, we spent X amount on the photographer. That person is probably going to act as your planner as well. Um, so that's the number one thing that I would say. And also too, I do, like I said before, the connection that you have with that person is probably going to be your top priority. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, how those conversations go, how to figure out who's a good match for you and stuff like that later in this video. But just know that if you trust that person or if you feel confident in their skills to not just capture your day, but also to, to listen to you, that's going to be the key to having an elopement compared or a good elopement and one that actually feels meaningful to you compared to just any sort of run of the mill, we got married kind of experience. Um, so the next step that I would probably say is, you know, how, how are you going to find your person? You know, there's a sea of people out there now, especially now that elopements are, you know, growing way bigger. Um, so, Honestly, I would tell most people just to start with Google. Um, if you go to, you know, the search engine and you just type in, you know, elopement photographers in X, you know, that's a good way to do it. Or if you just reverse it, like for instance, if I were looking for somebody in Colorado, I would type in Colorado elopement photographer into Google and it's gonna give you a lot of options. Um, just something to be aware of whenever you do that though, I would highly suggest finding somebody that's local um, just because like one, we're going to know the permitting situations. We're going to understand, you know, like where you can and can't shoot. We're also just going to have connections in the area and we're going to know all the locations that are going to give you the best experience, not just the ones that look the best. Um, but yeah, that's what I would suggest with that. But also be aware of that top section. There's going to be probably four or five at first then in the top left corner, it's going to say add next to them. Um, those might not be local. It's just a paid system that Google does. So just be aware that if you click on those, um, the odds are it might be somebody from out of state who's trying to come in to shoot. That's not always the case, but just something to consider whenever you do that. If you want the best experience, I would highly, highly suggest going with somebody local 
or at least somebody who specializes in these locations. Um, so, you know, whenever you're looking for somebody who specializes, like one, do they have any resources on their website? Um, do they talk about that location often? And then also two, you know, do they shoot just anywhere and everywhere? Or is it very certain on their site that they actually service that location and they can back that up with the work that they have? So that's something that I would just kind of consider and just also to encourage you to go through um, because in the, in the end, that's really going to give you the best experience. Um, so yeah, one is a good search spot to start would be Google. Um, and then you, of course you can find Instagram, social media, you know, that's a really good place that if you're looking for somebody who, you know, just matches a particular style, you could go that way. Um, and then there's like a couple of other things to kind of consider too. Like you might find different online websites that list different vendors. I would also just be a little bit aware of those um, only because again, some of those people might not be local. Um, a lot of those too, it's, you know, you pay monthly to s show up in a certain spot on those sites or to be on those sites. So just be aware of that as well. Um, if you are looking for somebody local and you want to go that route. Um, another thing to just kind of be aware of, um, the big thing that I always say is freebies. Um, if somebody's throwing out something for free, um, you know, sometimes it might seem like a really good deal, but the odds are if somebody is willing to give it out for free, they're a little more inexperienced. Um, it's the kind of thing, like if you want the best experience possible, I definitely suggest going with somebody who has a portfolio that you really love. Um, somebody that you feel like whenever you go to their site that, you know, you connect with what they show, you connect with the way that they present themselves and uh, just the kind of person that they are. Um, and yeah, I definitely just kind of consider that. Um, freebies are always kind of a toss up to where you know, especially out here in Colorado, there's a lot of people who want to shoot out here. So they're willing to just, you know, give out a lot of those things for free just to get the portfolio. But that doesn't always equate to giving you a good experience if they don't know the locations or all the, you know, ins and outs of living here in the state. Um, also too, like I said before, be aware of people who don't specialize in locations. Um, and this isn't to say that those people aren't going to give you a really great experience. That is not the case at all. I know that's like a very controversial statement um, that I just said um, to a lot of photographers and videographers, but I would suggest if you were going for a particular location, I would suggest finding somebody who definitely specializes in that location. They've been before, they understand the lay of the land, different things kind of like that. All right, so let's hop on to this next part. It's going to be a little bit more about just the next steps that you can take to actually get this rolling, to actually reach out to somebody, what to expect when you reach out to somebody, um, and just, uh, you know, how that all, the whole planning process starts. Um, because like I said before, I would suggest finding the photographer first or videographer because they're going to be able to help you plan. So if that's your first step of contact, you know, of course, or your first step to actually planning your elopement, the first thing you have to do is actually book somebody because um, they're not going to give you the information for free. Um, they're going to actually want you to book them first so that you actually commit to them. And you know, that's something that I fully back up. Um, I'm more than happy to answer questions if people have them beforehand. Um, and I'm going to go into a little bit of that process here with you. Um, but also too, I'm not just going to like, for instance, hand you out all of my planning guides that I have in my uh, planning portal. I'm, that's just not going to happen unless you book me. Um, so one of the things to consider with that is first go to their contact page, wherever that is, fill out their form. Um, if they ask you specific questions about your day, you know, just fill it out. I think it's something that the more information that you give them, the better they can determine, you know, if this is a, you know, a fit for them that they can actually provide you with the services that they offer. Um, excuse me, if they can provide you with the services that you want compared to the services that they offer. Um, so after that, most are probably going to ask you to get on a call with them, um, probably a video call. Um, and again, I would suggest doing that. Um, for me personally, if somebody does not get on a call with me, I like there's no way you're going to book me. Um, that's just not, it's a non-negotiable for me. Um, but there's a few reasons for that. And it's not because I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh, you have to like, you know, get on a call with me and like, like I'm gonna take up your time and sell you all this stuff. That's not the case at all. Um, 
You might see in a couple of my different videos, I talk about how the connection with the person that you hire matters because one, you want them or you want to make sure that they can provide you with that experience that you want. You want to make sure that they're legitimate in what they say they are. And then also too, you just want to make sure that you vibe with them and you just have that, you know, even if you're not going to be best friends forever, just somebody that you can get along with on your day and that you know that you can trust and you can go into your day with full confidence, knowing that, you know, whatever happens here, this person is an expert. I trust them and I know that they're be they're going to have my best interest in mind. That's going to be one of your number one top priorities. So that's why you really want to hop on a call with somebody because um, you just want to be able to experience them in person and figure out all of those different things. Um, because at the end of the day, it's really, really important just to uh, just go in with confidence, knowing that that person is going to deliver, they're going to have your back and all that kind of stuff too. Um, but just a couple of things, other things too here that I have written down that you just want to kind of, you know, figure out when you hop on a call with them. Um, I have uh, called the personality and BS metering. Um, so like I said before, you would definitely want to see like do your personalities match? Um, do your personalities, you know, get along with one another? It's like, you know, does this person rub you the wrong way? Um, do they talk too much for your preferences or, you know, whatever it might be? Because um, like, for instance, most of the couples that book me, um, I the what you hear me talking right here in this video is about as much as you're ever going to hear me talk in one setting. Um, and that's just because I'm sitting in a room alone and I'm staring at a camera and it feels kind of weird. So I'm going to keep talking, but you know, you want to figure out somebody that matches your energy levels or, you know, maybe for instance, like matches your spouse's energy levels. If that's, you know, a thing of like, Hey, I'm kind of worried that they might not, you know, need they might not come out of their shell like you want somebody that can bring you out of the bring them out of their shell or you know like just keep you in a comfortable spot um, but as far as like the bs metering goes i think i spoke about that a little bit earlier but you want to make sure that the person is who they say they are you want to make sure that the things that they advertise on their website line up with their words and because there's a lot of people out there that are trying to do this there's a lot that are not very professional about it um, or just haven't been in the industry for very long. Um, and maybe they didn't even write the copy on their, I mean, you never know. They may have not written the copy on their site. They may have just copied it from somebody else's. It happens. Um, um, but with that being said, you just wanna make sure of all those things, make sure that you trust them and you feel good about them. Um, you know, like a couple of other things too, is like you wanna make sure that they are actually sold out on the experience that you describe. Um, because that's also another part of it too, is you want somebody who isn't just going to sit there and say like, I offer this or I offer that. You want somebody who's gonna sit back and listen to what you actually want and then says, okay, you know, based off of what you said, you know, I definitely connect with that. I, here's a few different ways maybe we can accomplish that. Or, you know, like here's these resources that I have that actually match what you said that we can walk through together and figure this out together and actually make a day that's about you. Um, because at the end of the day, uh, you have to be, you know, you wanna be confident going into your day. You don't want um, to go into, you know, say before on your wedding, you're like, hey, we really just wanna, you know, go to this one spot, go back to Airbnb, hang out with our friends and family. And then there's somebody there trying to push you to do a hike or something. Like that just doesn't make any sense. Um, so that's part of one of the reasons that you're actually getting on a call. You're talking with them, you're hearing what they have to say, you're seeing if they're listening to you, and you're seeing if they actually meet the needs that you want to accomplish on your wedding day. Um, but also too, a few things to kind of consider after you hop off a call with somebody just to kind of solidify your decision that I have is like, you know, one, was the conversation easy? Did you connect with them as a person? Um, that's a very big thing to consider. Um, after all, with most elopements, you're going to be more intertwined with that person than you might think, um, whether it's the planning process moving up to your day or during your day, you know, like if you book somebody for a full day, you know, that's, it's the biggest day of your life um, up to this point. And you are, you wanna make sure that you connect with them. You just wanna make sure that it's a good fit because otherwise, you know, it's the difference between having somebody there that 
you know, might not interject or, you know, into what you like or somebody who, you know, kind of just helps you through the day and guides you through it. Um, you just want to make sure that that is a priority um, and that they can accomplish that, whatever that might look like for you in particular. Um, and then also too, another thing as well is can you envision and see yourself in the work that they do? Um, there's some people who might pose people, pose their couples a little bit more. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I also know too, a lot of the couples who book me don't like to be posed. So, and I think that's something too, that they can see it a lot in the work that I do that, you know, I'm going to have a way that I work specifically to where I'm a little bit more hands off and they know that they're not going to have to worry about that. Um, and then also too, as a result of it, they can see that, okay, I don't have to necessarily work to get that shot. I just really have to stand there and be myself. So that's where they're envisioning themselves and my work. And then based off of that, they're saying, okay, yes, that's their person because of this. We like their personality as well. They're a good match with what they can offer us planning wise and experience wise. So there you go. Um, but also too, do they provide the resources and experience that you want and need? And that's exactly what I was just talking about. Um, but this is a little bit more based off of the planning side of things. Um, you know, like for instance, if you wanted to get married in Iceland, Iceland is a place that I specialize in. Um, I only shoot in Colorado, Iceland, and New Zealand. That's it. I mean, if you wanted to bring me somewhere else, uh, you could, <laughs> but I definitely wouldn't be able to give you as good of an experience there. And I'd be very upfront with you about that. Um, I am with everybody who reaches out to me about other locations. Um, but that's just something to kind of consider. Like you definitely want somebody who can give you that experience that you want. Um, and that's something that we can talk about a little bit more, maybe in another video, but just of like, you know, what is that experience that I want? Cause I know that's, I say that and because I'm the photographer, videographer, I understand what that means. Um, but you might be sitting there thinking like, I don't know what the experience is. Um, so I'll probably cover that in one of the next videos because that's a whole nother topic in and of itself. Um, so if you don't see that right now, keep an eye out for it. It'll probably be out in the next couple weeks. Um, but yeah, so that's really all I have for you today. That's my number one tip whenever you're starting to plan your elopement is find your photographer first, find your videographer first that can help with planning and then go from there. Um, because if you try to figure out a lot of other things, it might just be a little bit more difficult um, compared to, you know, the photographers, videographers that have these systems in place. Um, like for instance, I have a planning portal that I give to all my couples that houses all of their information, whether it's timelines, resources, uh, vendor recommendations in detail, different things kind of like that. I put that in there so that it's easier for you to access it and have it. And also too, to where you don't have to sit there on Google and look everything up because the odds are I specialize in these places. So I understand and I know what's there. Um, and then, you know, figure out a way just to customize that directly to you and only for you. So those are just a couple things to consider. Um, if you have any questions for me, leave them below in the comments, or you can head over to the contact page on my website, which will be linked in the description below. If you have any questions, let me know. Just know that whenever you reach out to me from the first moment you do, like long until after this process, I'm gonna look after you. I'm gonna make sure that you have an experience that you're truly excited about and one that's really tailored to you. So if you have any questions about that, reach out. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you all in the next one.